Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about panning and zooming in PowerPoint using the Morph tool. This is a very interesting effect, and if you've ever watched the Ken Burns documentary, he uses this effect often and it has a good impact. And you can use it on your presentations as well. To demonstrate what this is, I'm going to take this slide and I'm going to pan it to the next slide. You can see there's a slight pan and a zoom effect. And then I can also back out of the slide using the same effect. So let's look at how I did that and recreate a few slides. All of these pictures I got from stock images within PowerPoint. So I go to insert pictures and stock images and they have a good repository over there. So let me delete this slide and I'm gonna hop back over to this slide, which is a light bulb. I've named this tool. If you go to the home tab and within the editing select, make sure that the selection pane is open. Then you can see all of the elements on your screen. And I named this tool light using two exclamation points. And that way I know that on the next slide, the element will have the same name. So you don't necessarily have to do that, but I think it's a good practice at this point. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this slide. You can press control D or right click and duplicate. So let's practice zooming first. For zooming, the easiest way I can do this is I'm going to drag a corner. I'm going to hold control and shift on my keyboard and I am just going to zoom it in. And I can see on the thumbnail, I can see the image right there. So that's a zoom. We're going to use the morph transition and then preview. And you can see it zooming in. It's a little bit abrupt because I have it zooming for two seconds. And so you can play around with the time, the duration, and see if maybe four seconds is better. That's a, a bit more subtle. It takes a little bit more time to get there. And then once it finishes zooming on here, you can put a text box there. That might be a very interesting effect. So let me go ahead and delete this slide. That was the, the zoom. I'm going to duplicate that. And now we're going to pan. Unfortunately, I don't have much room. This, this slide is exactly the same dimensions as the window there, but just use your imagination. I'm going to pan, use the morph tool, and now you can see what that looks like. Panning is when you move left to right. If you use the pan and the zoom at the same time, now that's an interesting effect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to crop this image, and I want to crop it so that it is exactly the dimension of my PowerPoint slide. And then I'm going to grab a corner, and I'm going to stretch that corner, and I want to zoom in and pan on the light bulb, the yellow light bulb. So I'm going to make sure that the white light bulbs are out of frame. I'm going to move the yellow light bulb over to the side just slightly and we'll play from there. It's a little bit fast so let's try that one more time. I'm going to go to the morph and this time let's give it a five second effect. The slower it is then the more gradual the transition and you can use that for emphasis. And there we go. That is a zoom and slide. So I downloaded a few other pictures so that we could play around with this. So here's one. I'm going to crop it so that it's the dimensions of the slide. You notice it's not as wide as the slide. And so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Now note that if you're going to be zooming in, you likely want to get a high resolution photo. And these are not necessarily high resolution photos, but you can get a photo from unsplash.com or pexelbay or pixels.com pexels.com. They have really good high resolution images that you can zoom in on and it won't be grainy. So here is my image. I'm going to duplicate this image. And then for the second image, I'll go ahead and crop it. And I'm just going to stretch it out a bit and maybe to the corner right there, apply the morph transition. I can see a preview of it right there. And just for fun, let's put in a text box as well. And I'm going to say the duckling. I'll highlight that. I'm going to change the font to something a little more interesting. We're going to make it bigger. And then I could make this white or off white. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and actually grab the color of the feathers right there. And I'll go ahead and make that a bit bigger. Let's see what this effect looks like. I'm going to preview it. It takes about two seconds and it morphs out. And then I can have the title up here. And you notice the title fades in. So it fades in and out. Now uh, we can try that same effect on this image as well. I'm not going to crop it. I'm just going to anchor that right there, duplicate it, and then maybe zoom way in on the head here. And I'm using this thumbnail to kind of guide me a little bit. All right, I'm going to transition. Let's put that morph right there. I can see the preview. Let's see what that looks like. So that's two seconds. Um, perhaps I want that to be slower. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this double click on it so I can crop the edges out and get a little bit more precision. 
All right, I just want to make sure he's kind of centered. I'm going to go back to transition and I'm going to increase that speed maybe up to maybe three seconds. I thought that two seconds seemed a little bit fast for that. So let's try that again. Here's the original picture. And then there's the zooming in. Now for this picture, I'm going to do something a little bit different actually. I'm going to go ahead and double click crop the slide and adjust it. And I'm actually going to zoom way in on the ball and then we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to bump this way up. I'm going to get her head right out of the frame, something like that. Now I'm going to duplicate that slide. And for this duplicated slide, I'll go ahead and crop it and I will put her right back in the picture as so and apply the morph transition and you can see the preview. So that looks kind of interesting. You can zoom out just as, like you can zoom in. So that's a zoom and a pan effect. Uh, again, just for these, because these are kind of cinematic effects. And so I think that the duration, I just think they look better with a longer duration. And I'm going to do that exact same thing on this slide right here. I'll go ahead and duplicate the slide because this is where I'm going to end up. And this first slide, I'll go ahead and crop it. I'm going to drag out the corners, hold control and shift on the keyboard. And I'm just going to zoom way out and find something that's kind of an interesting effect. And then I'm going to zoom out and we'll have a beach. So let's um, preview. Well, first I need to apply this transition, the morph transition. And I think that will look good probably at maybe 3.5 seconds. So let's see what we have so far. We have 10 slides. We have various transitions. The first one is a pan and a zoom where I'm zooming in onto the light bulb, a very slow and uh, meaningful transition. Here I have a duck and I am zooming and panning down and adding a title. With this animal, I'm just zooming in on its head a bit. Here's the ball and zooming out so we get the whole picture. And then lastly, I have an image. This looks pretty good as a background slide too. A slight gradient, but nothing that would be distracting or affect accessibility. But then when I zoom out, then I can get the picture. Last note, I'll notice on this slide right here, I see a lot of graininess. Um, and this was a hard shot to get because of the exposure. And it's also not a very large picture and I'm stretching it out to be very large. And so when you do that, it just stretches out the pixels, especially if there's a, an image that has some noise in it, it accentuates the noise. So that's something to be mindful of when you're using your pictures, you want to get the highest resolution pictures as possible. If you plan on zooming in, because you don't want to get a, a picture that's the size of the slide and then make the picture larger than the size of the slide, because that's when you get those artifacts. So those are the basics of panning and zooming using the morph tool in PowerPoint.